Is the palace finally hitting back against some of these, well, latest myths, truths, shall we say, in the latest instalment from Meghan and Harry and their very expensive docuseries for Netflix? As ever, let me explain. Hi, good morning, Neil Sean here. Nice to see you. Hope you're all keeping well. And as ever, thank you so much for your kind comments about some of the recent videos. The royal scandal, eh? Just proves, doesn't it, that nothing is new. As I say, you know, it's interesting with royal scandals because it's about the moment we're in. We all read it, we all know it, and then it fades, doesn't it, as time. And until people highlight it again, seemingly people have forgotten. Will people seriously remember Meghan Markle in the annals of history? She certainly will be remembered for not being in it for very long and of course damaging it along the way as best that she can. But it's interesting as now the fallout of that Netflix series really emerges because one of the most telling points about Meghan is the fact that seemingly she feels that nobody will actually check up or indeed retaliate, you know, say anything back. We'll recall, of course, this very nice young lady, Ashley Hale. She is the daughter of Meghan's half-sister, Samantha. And it's interesting because she detailed her background, exactly how she grew up, etc. And more importantly, seemed a quite sane person to have on camera. I felt a little bit sorry for her because, you know, she detailed how she had to be uninvited by Meghan to the royal wedding. Now, it's interesting here, isn't it? Because obviously she's a girl that's not necessarily used to the world's media and really would have accepted, seemingly, the very kind offer and then the withdrawal from the former royal. But as ever, if you dig a little bit deeper, perhaps Ashley could have found this out. What really emerges is this, that actually, according to the palace, they really had nothing to do with the people that Meghan wished to invite from her side of the family. In fact, when this was first muted, and as ever we have to say allegedly, this was welcomed, you know. Seemingly, you know, finally they felt that she had somebody that, they, that she wished to invite to the wedding. Now we can only surmise that there's a reason behind this. Perhaps Doria doesn't get on that well with Ashley. Who knows, you know. We're not quite sure as ever everything is uh, cloak and dagger with Meghan. But according to a very senior source at the palace, the final wedding list for personal invites rested with both Harry and Meghan. Now, if I was Ashley, I would question, well, obviously you couldn't invite me, but you could invite the Clooney's who you'd never met, who openly said on camera they'd only come because they'd got a free invite. And then we have the likes of Robbie Williams, a sort of friend of Prince Harry, but not a close friend. The Beckhams, again, you know, close by association, so one would suggest, if I was Ashley, exactly, why were you disinvited? Because certainly, according to the palace, it was nothing to do with them. Well, it would be interesting to know, wouldn't it, whether Ashley will ever be given the right to respond. And more importantly, was Ashley paid to be on camera alongside her mother, Doria? Because now it appears that Doria seemingly, according to sources, already had a royal allowance. We're not quite sure where that came from, but as ever, smothered in cloak and daggers once again. With Harry and Meghan, they're continually wanting to make sure that their version comes out, but in their own stupid vanity, it always gets exposed, but not necessarily in the way that they wish. As ever, I'd love to know what you think to this particular story in the comments below. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.